Hello everyone, welcome to the Globo class. So today in the class we are going to cover the modernization theory. <clears throat> I'm just starting the pen tool, give me a second. Okay, so in the world we are knowing the countries with their different names, right? In terms of economy, in terms of development. It could be first world versus third world countries, right? It could be developed versus developing countries. What else? What do you think? What could be the another known word? It could be global north versus global south also. Right, so these are some of the terminologies which we have been discussing on in the name of development, right? In the name of their growth or development, that how the world has been placed um, at the larger level in terms of their economy. Now, there was the time when people started, thinkers started thinking that why the poor remains poor or why the developing countries remain poor. And this was the time when a uh, lot of thinkers, they started coming up with their own theories, right? And we are calling them, uh, calling them as the extreme theories, extreme theories, because uh, some of them, they suggested that this is happening due to the capitalist countries, some, they went uh, extreme right and they said that, no, this is not happening because of this. But there are the internal factors, there are the governmental policies which are playing an important role. So today we are going to study that how um, these theories came up, right? Came up with their own ideas, with their own opinion, with their own school of thought. So in 1950s, in 1950s, where the development was considered equal to growth or prosperity. Okay, that was the uh, thing where uh, development or developed country or uh, first world country, all right, first world country or the developed or the global north means that growth and prosperity, these things are taking place. That's why we are calling these things. So a common belief was that a country can develop only if there is a capital investment, okay, only if there is a capital investment. So that was the common belief which came up somewhere in 1950s that a country can develop only if there is a capital investment. And this was the phase when the modernization theory, modernization theory emerged, right? In 1950s, somewhere around this modernization theory emerged. And in this modernize, uh, modernization theory, it started talking about that capitalism is good. Capitalism is good. And this is actually giving the rise to the developed country. There are lots of internal factors which are playing an important role. And the slogan was that West is best, right? The West model, which is given by the first world country or the developed country, that model is considered as the best model. Now, in this, there was the growth which was taking place that was through industrialization. Okay, so it talked about westernization, which is the synonym of industrialization. So this was the time when it started talking about that in case if a country wants to grow, then it is very important that industrialization industry is taking place over there. Internal factors playing an important role. As I said earlier, that internal factors are important. Which are those internal factors? So these internal factors are economic policies of the government, import, export, free trade, natural resources, whether the country has natural resources or not, whether the country has low corruption level or the leadership quality of the um, political system or of the uh, 
politics over there so these were the important things which were playing an important role so structure right structure of that uh, country playing an important role to keep the country in the progressive mode now further to this modernization theory which was propelled by w w rosto w w rosto um, he proposed five stages of development okay these are the progressive stages of development and he said that there would be the five stages for any country to grow first stage is primitive or traditional stage traditional stage what is this traditional stage can you guess traditional stage where there is the primitive society agriculture is taking place barter system is there right and people are um, based on their basic subsistence so this is called primitive or the traditional stage very basic right the focus is on agriculture or the barter system or the subsistence farming then second stage comes which is known as precondition for takeoff pre condition for takeoff what will happen in this kind of society so this is where economy is progressing infrastructure is taking place and investment ratio is also increasing right so these were the things which were known as preconditions for takeoff then the third one comes the third one is the stage of takeoff now in this stage dynamic economic growth takes place urbanization and industrialization they are also taking place and technological breakthrough is happening in this kind of stage okay so these are some of the factors of take off stage then the fourth stage comes which is known as drive to maturity drive to maturity in this stage there is industrial sector which is over the primary sector dependency on other economies are reducing gradually and standard of living is also increasing right drive to maturity then the fifth one is stage of high mass consumption stage of high mass consumption now in this stage prosperity has taken place people have a lot of leisure time they are spending more on the luxurious items right and the national income is also increasing because this is the outcome of more expenditure also so this is known as the stage of high mass consumption now what has started happening that in this rosto stages of growth then there was lot of criticism which started taking place people started disagreeing with this model they said number one thing is that this model didn't speak about any impact of history of colonialism okay that a country remains poor because of the colonization the country was colonized or the imperialistic policy of the other nature so it is not talking about the history it may take time the uh, for a country to get developed then the second one was that it looked just at the internal factors the internal factors which i spoke about so this model is just looking at the internal factors it is least bothered about the external factor that any other country may also uh, play an important role for this one then the third one it talked about that this is talking about the mass consumption stage right mass consumption do you think that this mass consumption would be a sustainable one no so this is what the third criticism which took place that this um, this stage is not uh, sustaining sustainable right but now what do we see the impact of this model we see the impact of this model which was used during 1956 
1950s or 60s in the USA policies where the USA took a lot of political decision considering uh, uh, this uh, rose to stages of development as it wanted to impose its capitalist model to deter the communist model right the world war cold war was going on that time and it wanted to keep communist uh, communist model away one of the example is of vietnam over here where the vietnam in vietnam deforestation took place deforestation deforestation took place by using orange agent why this took place because they wanted to uh, take out the labor force from the countryside to the cities right they wanted to uh, develop the industries for industries it was required that they require labor force so what to do so take away the agriculture deforestation took place over there by using this one so that um, vietnam's economy can move gradually towards which stage from precondition for take off to take off then gradually to drive to maturity all these things so this is how usa started using this policy for some of these countries so this is what uh, this theory talks about um, then in late 1950s or the 60s the second model which criticized this one came up known as dependency theory dependency theory or gradually world system theory these two models which are of the marxist uh, by nature they talked about the external factors what are these external factors these external factors are of the world capitalist system which is playing an important role why these countries remain poor or inequal right so these were the models and they started talking about the structure thing that there is a flaw in the structure of any country which is keeping these poor countries to remain poor what are these structures so you already know in one of my videos i have discussed this is called base of marx and this is called structure right structure theory in marx marx said that this one is influencing the structure and this one is uh, to uh, remain in the power so what are these structure it is politics religion media history education system all these things playing an important role so that inequality can remain or the countries remain rich all right so for further uh, detail about this dependency theory or the world system theory or the marxist theory you may refer a video by me the link is given in the description box then you have in 1970s the neoliberalism model the neoliberalism model i'll be talking about this model in my further video i hope this video was useful you could understand about the modernization theory See you again in my next class. Stay safe.